praise the Lord. The catalyst effect of Lazarus. Amen. Go back to verse 1 for me, Sister Kelly. We're going to break this thing down. What's my favorite thing to do in church? Exegesis. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, the saints know it. We study to show ourselves approved in this house. Amen. And so when God gave me this, um, how many of you know about the story of Lazarus? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Most people. Amen. Now, we know about Lazarus, and even when we were children, we saw books talk about Lazarus being raised from the dead, and we saw the cartoon character coming forth with the rap like a mummy, a man coming out of the tomb, and Jesus on the other side waiting to greet him, right? And so that's pretty much as far as it usually goes when we're talking about the text. But today, I want to dive a little deeper and understand the importance of that particular miracle, amen? Because I believe that when we're studying the life of Jesus, in order to be like Jesus, we have to understand why he did what he did, because there's a meaning behind everything. Somebody say amen. amen. And what I've discovered is that we as Christians strive when we understand the word of God versus when we just know it. Hallelujah. If I got somebody in the house, say amen. amen. And so here, when we run into this text, the Bible says that Lazarus was sick. And it specifically states that he was the Lazarus of Bethany. The Bible says the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Right there, I want to relay the importance of these two women. This town is Bethany, and Bethany is mentioned in the Bible several times. But in this particular text, we are drawn to the fact that Bethany is the town where Mary and Martha reside. Somebody say they reside there. Do you know how important you have to be for Jesus to recognize your town based on who lives there? You being the person. Hello, somebody. And so here it says, it was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the sister sent to him saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. I just want y'all to pay attention right here. They send word to Jesus about their brother, and they don't just say, our brother Lazarus is sick. They say, Lazarus, whom you love, is sick. And I don't know about you, but when you read the Bible and you read the context behind the text, everything that's in the text is important for us to know. Here it says, they said, he whom you love is is sick. They wanted Jesus to understand that somebody that he loved, somebody that he cared about, somebody that he adored was in need of something. Amen. And here the Bible says when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the son of God may be glorified through it. Somebody say through it. I'm here to let you know this morning that there are some things you cannot go around. Some things you have to go through. Can I talk to the people of God today? When I say exegete this text, we're going to break the whole thing down. There are some things that I did not want to endure, but the Lord was not going to take me around the wilderness. He was going to take me directly through it. I'm preaching today. Uh, the loss of the bishop is most prevalent, prevalent to me, relevant, because I didn't expect for that to happen when it did. But God says, son, you can't evade this one, but I'm going to help you get through it. Can I talk to you? And so here the Bible says that Jesus told him this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is that when Jesus proclaims something, what he says is final. Can I talk to you? And right here, Jesus said this sickness is not unto death. Are y'all listening to me? But here... In verse number five, the Bible says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Now, the New King James Version says it like this. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days. The NLT gives us a more uh, relevant point of view of why this is stated. Flip your, flip your version real quick to NLT and let's read that verse five and through six right there. In the NLT version, the Bible says, So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. I'm going to teach. Deacon, can I teach? The Bible said, although, somebody say although. Although he loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, 
he stayed where he was for the next two days. Let me make that make sense for you. In verse 4, he says that this is for the glory of God. <laughs> oh, God, I'm finna teach now. But in verse 5 and 6, it says he stays put as if the problem at hand was not as serious as we thought it was. I'm finna talk to the saints. Ah. And right here we see that his current assignment was more important than the need of the one he loved because the need of the one he loved was all for the glory of God in the long run. Can I talk to you? There are times when we say, God, you didn't show up on time. But it's not that he didn't show up on time. Your situation is going to bring about the testimony that's going to bring you and the next person out of their place. Somebody say, although he loves you, he stayed put. My God, somebody say it's important to be in the will of God. <laughs> My God. Verse 7 says in the New King James, finally, you know, it says in the New King, then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. I want to look at verse 8 in the NLT so we can understand why this is important. In verse number 8, I hope y'all ready to take notes, people of God. Verse number 8 in the NLT says, but his disciples objected. Somebody say they objected. They objected. This is what they said. Minister Tyler, they said, Rabbi, only a few days ago, the people in Judea were trying to stone you. Are you going there again? Uh, this is where we got to break this thing down for your life. Verse 8, the disciples uh, allow Jesus to remember something that they think he's forgotten. They say, Rabbi, in other words, teacher. In other words, we're in submission. We just want to remind you of something. Just a few days ago, they were trying to stone you. You know stone means trying to kill you by throwing rocks at you. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And here they say, are you going there again? Somebody say, are you going there again? This is what God gave to me. Some of God's greatest miracles will require you to go back to a place you previously were rejected at because now your current assignment requires it. Can I, can I talk to you the way I need to talk to you? Uh, it's God is trying to work some of our biggest miracles, life-changing things in our lives, but it requires us to visit rejection areas. Can I talk to you? And when we revisit rejection, it has a way of messing with our psyche. It messes with your psychedelic. It tells you that you're in a place where you had trauma. It tells you that you're in a place where you were not welcome. It tells you that maybe you shouldn't be going here. But sometimes God has to take you back so that he can undo what the devil laid down. Can I talk to you? Stop. The disciples objected, but the objection was not part of God's plan. Can I talk to you? Sometimes your wisest counsel will give you earthly wisdom, but the spirit of God should always trump man's counsel. Can I talk to you? I got somebody in the house say amen. And they said, are you going there again? Watch what happens in verse 9 of the NLT. It's not on screen. Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of this world. But at night, there is danger of stumbling because they have no light. What is Jesus saying right here? Jesus is saying that if they're in darkness, we don't leave them in the dark. We go there so that they can be illuminated to see where they're going. Can I talk to you? Sometimes they're rejecting you because they can't see the light of God yet. But the second time you go, I'm going to talk to somebody. The second time you go in God. The light that God has on the inside of you uh, is going to birth and going to create a flame that nobody can deny. And let me just make that make sense for you. Because the light of God is within you to begin with. But sometimes, can I talk to you? God has not revealed that light to the person you're ministering to because it's not your time yet. Can I speak to you? And I know we don't like rejection. I got to talk to myself too. I know we don't like being turned aside. I know we don't like being turned away from. But Rejection is required. Somebody say, yeah, I got to go through it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Let's look at verse 17. Uh, no, actually, let's look at verse 14 in the New King James. The Bible says, then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Now remember in the text earlier Jesus said this sickness Is not unto death wow. Can I mess with your theology For a second uh -huh. Jesus said 
This sickness is not unto death, Sister Kwanzaa. But then he tells the disciples a couple verses down, Lazarus is dead. I'm finna talk to you. God's definition of dead and our definition of dead is two different concepts. Can I talk to you? Sometimes a situation looks dead to me, <laughs> but it's alive to God. And I'm finna talk to you. Sometimes what we assume to be taken away from the version of life as we know it is really only resting in the version of God's rest. So I'm finna talk to you. And notice what he said earlier. He said he's asleep in verse 11. I'm finna talk to you. See, 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 when you look at the exegesis on the text, in verse 11 he says he's sleeping. In verse 14 he says he's dead. Can I talk to you? God's definition of sleep is man's definition of dead. But if man thinks you dead, you might just be sleeping in that area. It might be something God hasn't awakened out of you yet. And just because man wrote you off don't mean God's finished with you yet. Somebody say God ain't finished. God is not finished. You better preach. Yes. My God. Verse 15, he said, and I am glad. Wait a minute, he's excited, he's happy that Lazarus is dead. Watch why. For your sake, somebody say for my sake. That I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Can I talk to you? God is not forsaking us, man of God. See, God is coming when he feel ready because he knows when the time is right. Can I talk? See, sometimes if he goes somewhere before God's timing, the very people that you are assigned to will reject you because you're out of order. Can I talk to you? But when you show up at the right time, they'll receive you. Can I talk to you? Somebody say, right time? Receptiveness. Wrong time? Rejection. Oh, come on, people. Look. Don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. It's okay. Some rejection comes because you're in the right place at the right time. Some rejection comes because you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Some rejection comes because you're in the right place at the wrong time. Can I talk to you? And the right message at the wrong time will still get rejected, Minister Tyler. Because if Jesus went places and they didn't receive him and he is God, who are you? Thinking, can I really teach the way I need to? This text opened my eyes to so many things. Watch this. In verse 16, the Bible says, Then Thomas, who is called the twin, <laughs> said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now look at doubting Thomas once again. Let me show you something. The reason that Thomas doubted when Jesus died and rose from the dead wasn't because he was doubting the resurrection. He had a doubting spirit to begin with. Can I talk to you? <laughs> don't, don't look at me like that. <laughs> when, 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 <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Some situations bring out what's already been there. Can I talk to you? See, a lot of people don't read John chapter 11, so they don't know Thomas was a doubter to begin with. But if you look at this text, this man said, let us go to the disciples. Let us go die with him. Pay attention. Let us go die with him. What's he saying? He's saying this man is a fool. They was just trying to stone him earlier. But nevertheless, let us go die with him. Let me show you something. Not everybody that's riding with you really believes in what you're doing. Can I talk to you? Because Thomas didn't believe that the sickness wasn't unto death. Because he didn't even believe that Jesus wasn't going to die when he went back to the place he was just projected at. Can I talk to you? And sometimes we got people with us that genuinely love us but don't understand the plan that God has. And all mean is no sense for you. It's okay. Because in the process of what God is doing, he's going to reveal it to them. But unless God reveals it to them, they ain't going to get it. Can I talk to you? So it's okay. Sometimes they're not going to get it. Say it to your neighbor. Sometimes. They're not going to get it. God is speaking. I'm just in the top portion of my text. Can I really tell you what I'm about to do? <laughs> in Psalm verse 17, the Bible says, So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now, I'm really finna mess with some theology. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem. About how many miles away? Two miles away. My, 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 my. Verse 19. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. I gotta emphasize something to you. Somebody say two miles. Two miles. Where Jesus was and where Lazarus was sick at was only a two-mile journey. Thinking I really gotta teach. Even in Bible times, two miles is not a long way. Can I talk to you? All you got to do is get on a horse, get on a donkey, get on something, ride the oxen, whatever, and you'll be there like this. Can I, yes, amen. Can, can I really teach the way I need you? 
the Bible says it was only two miles away, Prophet Speaker. And right here, God opened my eyes to something. Jesus showed up four days after the man has been in the tomb. <sighs> now, I don't know about you. <laughs> But when somebody dies, they don't throw them in the casket immediately. Can I talk to you? That means he'd have been dead for a little minute now. Can I tell you? Oh, God, can we really think the way we need to think? When he gets there, Jesus gets there, and Lazarus has been in the tomb for four days. Can I talk to you? And the Bible says directly after. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. In other words, John wanted to let us know that it's not because he couldn't get there. Can I talk to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not because he was late. Can I talk to you? Yeah. It's not because he didn't know where he was going. Yeah. It's because he showed up on time. I always seem late to me. And this is the part where I need you to write some text and notes. Jesus seemed late to come to his friend's rescue. <sighs> Minister, right there, that thing finna ring off in a second. Jesus seemed late to come to his friend's rescue. Why is this important? Because by the way it looks, it looks as if he was right around the corner and he's late. Somebody say he seems late. But the thing I'm reminded of through the entire passage is that earlier in the text, he said the Father is gonna be glorified through the Son of. And I talk to you. Uh, God can't get the glory out of a perfect situation. Y'all exactly. might want to take some notes. I said God can't get the glory out of a perfect situation. God only gets glory, brother Shalom, when things are screwed up. Can I talk to you? God only gets glory when it's jacked up, sister Joe. God only gets glory when everybody walk away from you and it's just you and God. God only gets the glory when God is able to save somebody that needs saving. Somebody say, I need him to get glory. Jesus seemed late to come to his friend's rescue. Bless you, man of God. Mm, this is it right here. Let's look at verse number 20. Verse number 20. The Bible says, Now Martha, as soon as she had heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Okay, let me get some tissue off so it's possible. Now verse 21 says, Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here... My brother would not have died, thank you, minister. And, but even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. I'm finna talk now, see. The Bible says that when they found out he was on the way, Mary was sitting in the house, and Martha ran out to meet him. Now, can I play with theology again? Let me talk to you. In Luke number 10, Martha is described as being too busy for God. Oh, I'm finna talk to the saints right now. I'm finna really talk. In Luke chapter 10, the Bible says that Martha is in the kitchen busy in herself with serving the disciples and Jesus. And Mary is at the feet of the master. But now, when it really counts, Mary is in such a state of grief and shock that the strong sister, her relationship with Christ done matured. Can I talk to you? I'm finna talk now. Now he's on the way and she goes and meets him. She don't have to wait. He don't have to wait and say, Martha, come here. What he told her in Luke 10 resonated in John 11. I'm finna talk to y'all. And that's why I'm patient with difficult people. Because sometimes the strongest people are more concerned about the I's being dotted and the T's being crossed. And you have to relate to them. Get some time in the face of God. It's not about the work you do. It's about the worker. But then after they get the analogy, you'll see their relationship with God mature so to the point that they'll shock even the people that was closest to him. Because now the person that didn't get it got a closer walk with him than the one that was sitting at his feet. I'm finna talk to you. Don't throw Martha aside. Martha got the same potential Mary got, if not more. I'm finna talk to the saints. Sometimes they're a little hard-hearted, stiff neck, don't want it. It's okay. Pray for them, wait on it. Because let me tell you something. Martha learned her relationship with Christ. Somebody say she learned it. She learned it. Ah, my God, my God. Martha runs out to meet him. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Her, her, her relationship had grown. Can I help you? Put this on screen, Sister Kayla. Martha, oh, put it back, put it back. Martha is the strong sister. This is points for y'all. Martha is the strong sister. Somebody say she's the strong one. Yeah, she crying too. But she crying while she go to the master. She need help. <laughs> I'm finna talk to you. It's okay to be vulnerable in the presence of God. 
But sometimes you need a spirit of Martha. You got to run and meet God where he is. Can I talk to you? My Bible says, seek him while he may be found, Brother Shalom. And see, when it says, seek him while he may be found, God is always around the corner. The question is, are you meeting God or are you waiting on him to meet you? See, sometimes he'll meet you where you at. But sometimes you got to go in and say, uh-uh, they don't like this, they don't like this. Sometimes you got to get up out of your comfortability, get out of your comfort zone, and go meet God where he at. Because I know that he's always near. But sometimes he's near, not literally next to you. Can I talk to you? Near don't mean I'm right next to you. Near means I'm in the vicinity of you. Can I talk to you? And God wants some of the people of God to get out of waiting on him to show up in the midst of their situation and take your situation to the fixer. If the saints are awake, say amen. amen. My God, my God. Martha's the strong sister. In verse 23, the Bible says, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. <laughs> I'm about to shout right here, Minister Tyler. Somebody say, your brother will rise again. I don't want you to take, take brother out of that word when you think about it for your own self and put whatever dead situation you got in the midst of that statement and say, your will rise again. Can I tell you? Your marriage will rise again. Your relationship will rise again. Your family security will rise again. Your finances, they're going to rise again. Can I talk to you? Your ministry is going to rise again. You can keep on for the prophesy. Uh, your platform is going to rise again. What I know about God is that when God says it's going to rise, prophet, baby, it's coming. It may look dead as a go now. It might have been stinking by now. But when Jesus says it's going to rise, it's rising. Somebody say it's rising. Because he's the resurrection. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Watch Martha. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Watch her. She ain't even looking for God to do it now, although she knows he's capable. Can I talk to you? Let me show you something that I realized about Martha. Martha realized that because Jesus is able to keep people from dying, she realized that if Jesus showed up after her brother died, maybe it was God's will. Oh, I'm finna talk to you right now. Sometimes you gotta be willing to say, God, if it's supposed to be dead, I'm gonna let it die. Because sometimes the willingness to let the thing be dead shows God that you got his heart posture in mind, not your own plan. And when you tell God, it's okay, I'm gonna keep on serving you, it's okay, I don't understand it right now, it's okay, I really ain't recollecting right now, it's okay, God, I'm struggling right now, but it's okay, because I know your ways are better than my ways, and your thoughts are better than my thoughts. The minute you say that, Jesus say something along the lines of this. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Watch what she says. She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. In other words, all the Jewish people were waiting on the Messiah. Martha got the recollection that Peter already had. See, I'm trying to tell you her relationship group. She went from not knowing that she needed to be in the master seat to knowing that he is God and walking in the flesh. Can I talk to you? You got to be ready to go before God and say, I know it looked dead, but you the resurrection. I know it's messed up, but you the way. I know I feel lost, but you're my compass. I know I don't know which way to turn, but you're my direction. I know I'm grieving right now, but you're my comfort. I know I ain't got nobody in my circle, but you're my wise counselor. And when you tell God that, God will raise your dead situations back up. Why? Because the Father must be glorified through the Son. If you await church, say amen. amen. My God, my God. I feel the Holy Ghost minister Tyler in this place. This is a different level right here. My God. Let's look at, uh, well actually, matter of fact, put this on screen, Sister Kayla. We've been talking about it the whole time. Martha had come to know who Christ is and her relationship with him showed based on her faith. But Martha had come to know who Christ is and her relationship showed based on her faith. Watch what she says. Martha says to Jesus, Martha says to Jesus in verse 22, even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Oh, I need somebody to have that type of faith with me. Whatever I ask of God, he's going to credit this to talk to you. You understand? Uh, because I see me and God, we friends. Can I talk to you? 
she was talking to God himself. And she knew that, see, because she said, you are the girl. I'm going to run out this church. She was telling him something he already know. But watch me. This is how I know she was a disciple. Because Jesus never glorified himself like the Father. So she never did it neither. All his disciples recognized him as God. But they called him who he was. The Son of God cannot talk to you. Because after he died, thank you, man of God. And he rose again. Then he became the name above every name. But before that, he always brought it back to the Father. Then because he did that, the Father brought it back to him. Can I talk to you? If you bring the glory back to the one who deserves it. Somebody say he deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it all. Jesus. Come on. Come on. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I don't know about you. I, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Oh God, help me Jesus. My God. The Bible says, oh my God. Verse 28, when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called. Watch me. Secretly called. Somebody say secretly. Secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come and is calling for you. Why she went secretly? Because sometimes huh, that talk you need to have with God don't involve nobody else in your business. Can I? <laughs> See the people that was consoling her in grief They weren't ready to have enough faith to believe that the miracle was going to come So Martha had to go tell Mary Look I know what it looked like But Jesus looking for you <laughs> And if they know anything about Jesus Because they do they disciples Let me talk to you <laughs> See when they mention the twelve They don't mention Martha and Mary But they was disciples too yes. See they was a part of the seven yes. And I talk oh, I'm finna yes. talk now yes. I'm finna yes. answer yes. this text yes. And so Martha goes to Mary and say Look 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 The healer outside Look 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 yes. The raise of the dead outside yes. Look Look, look, look. The yeah, demon, I am not so he passed to cast out devils. He outside. You know what I'm talking about? The yeah. teacher's outside. He's calling for you. Yeah. And Mary ran down to the Bible, says she quickly, as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Somebody say quickly. quickly. See, 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 I'm not waiting on God to do it. I'm going to get up as soon as I hear the word and I'm going to go quickly. I got to talk to you real quick. Sometimes huh, the validity of what God is about to do in your life is based on how quickly you run to it. Can I? Yes. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you can't drag your feet on this seat. You gotta run with a quickness, see? Because that situation caught you out the blue. So now you need to run to Jesus as soon as they come. Come up. Oh God, I'm finna talk to you. In other words, too much time been wasted. Mary, you've been crying long enough. Look, the remedy is here. Run to him. Can somebody say, run to him? Run to him. Verse 32. It says, then when Mary came where Jesus was. And saw him, she fell down at his feet, <clears throat> saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Whew. This is deep right here, y'all. This is deep. Now, I, I got to help y'all understand this text. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus are loved by Jesus. He doesn't just like them. He loves them. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So when someone that you love comes to you about somebody else y'all both love and says, if you hadn't have been, not been here, they'd still be, oh, come on, somebody, don't look at me like that. Some of us have heard that in real life. Can I talk to you? If you had a did, they still be here. If you had a done, they still be around. If you had a said, they would have left. If you had a done, they would have <laughs> oh, come on, somebody. So now Mary's telling Jesus, Jesus, in essence, it's your fault. Uh -huh. Oh, God, I worship you, Holy Ghost. Uh, Mary tells Jesus, the one who is the healer and the giver of life, Jesus, uh, if you had been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. You wouldn't even be in that tomb. Can I talk to you? Somebody say, grief is speaking. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Somebody say, grief is speaking. Sometimes we're not willing to let things go. And so we blame the one who can fix the problem as the person that caused the problem. I'm going to talk to you. Uh, that's not just talking about Jesus. It's talking about God's people too. Sometimes we say it's your fault and that's the person that God want to use to revive the situation. It's okay. Somebody say grace. <laughs> Jesus had grace because he understood her grief. I'm going to talk to you. There is not one situation that you be grieving about or that you're upset about or that you don't have an understanding about that Jesus does not understand. I'm going to talk to you because watch what happens in the text. The Bible says in verse 33 therefore when Jesus Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping. Somebody said she got an entourage. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Somebody say Jesus was troubled. Now when we see this say he's groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Literally his spirit groaned. 
I'm finna help y'all understand another text. It's not uncanny for me to understand why Romans 8 says that all the creation is groaning for the children of God to be revealed. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And the Holy Spirit groans and moans with utterings that we cannot oh, come on somebody. The reason why it's not uh, uncommon for me to understand that, it's not hard, it's because Jesus haha, is where the Holy Spirit came from. Can I talk to you? So when Jesus groaned in his spirit, the Holy Spirit was groaning. But let me break something down for you. The Bible says in Romans 8, when the Spirit of God groans, all things work together for the good of them who love God and are called according to his purpose because he knows the will of God from the beginning because he was there in the beginning. Can I talk to you? So the minute that Jesus groaned in his spirit, God said, I'm about to do something. I'm finna talk to y'all. The father said, now I'm finna change the situation. Because my son's spirit down there groaning. And my spirit and his spirit are one. So if he's groaning, I'm groaning. So if anybody should be upset about Lazarus, it should be Jesus. And since he is, I'm going to change the situation. Look at me, people of God. Sometimes you just need to take it to God. Because the thing that you upset about, if you just go before God with full vulnerability and tell him how you really feel the way Mary did, the Holy Spirit will groan and that will fix your situation. My God, my God, my God, my God. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit groaned within him. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. And the Bible says in verse 34, and he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. I'm going to give you some points right here. Jesus was always aware of what he was about to do. However, this goes right with the text. Put it on screen. He was still able to empathize with those in grief and be in tune with his actual feelings. This is important for the millennial Christian right now. I need y'all to listen to what I'm saying. We live in a culture that desensitizes everything. People die, nobody cares. We see it all the time. People say somebody died on the timeline, it's like, oh my gosh, okay, boom. Next thing. People get murdered, we desensitize. Let me tell you something. That's a plot of the enemy. Because even Jesus, God himself, was in tune with his emotions, prophet and speaker. The Bible says that he said, where have you laid him? And when they showed him where he was, just the sight of someone he loved dead made him weep. I'm finna talk to y'all right quick. Some of us need to learn how to weep. We don't like crying. And that's the problem. We don't like getting it out. And that's the problem. We holding it inside. And it's tearing us apart from the inside out. But if you would just weep for a second. Somebody say weep. If you would just weep before the Lord. If you just be vulnerable with the creator. Let him know you hurting by this thing. Let him know that person really scarred you. Let him know that situation really put you back a little bit. Let him know that you inside. You upset about it. Just tell him. And go ahead and weep. Oh, I'm finna preach in this place. Because if you just weep for a second. Second, take the time to grieve. When you get done grieving, God will give you the power to undo that grief. And that's why weeping may endure for a night. But joy is coming in the morning. Somebody say, I need to weep. Two words. Some of the most powerful pieces in scripture I've ever read. Jesus wept. Watch the next verse. It says, then the Jews say, see how he loved him. Watch me. Sometimes people don't know how you feel about something and they think you don't care until you show emotion. So while you're trying to be hard and gangster, you're pushing away people who need to see you have emotion. Because you showing emotion is going to be relatable to those that are already grieving too. And now they receive you. Because if you always seem powerful, people are saying this person ain't human. They faking it. Some say, I can't live like that. That's robotic. But you need to be able to be transparent. You can't be vulnerable before everybody, but you can be transparent. And in times of loss, it's okay to weep. I ain't just talking about when people die, people of God. We lose things, we lose jobs, we lose people, we lose income, we lose things. It's okay to weep. Somebody say weep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what happens is when you weep, what happens is when the tears come out of the ear, eye ducts, right? It actually cleanses. Oh, come on, people of God. Y'all know what I'm talking about. 
it cleanses that there. And then afterward, don't you feel refreshed? Oh, I'm feeling tough to talk to you. Now, if you try to cut the crowd out, yeah, you're still in there, you're gonna still be hurting. But if you just let it flow, somebody say, let it flow. If you just let it flow, see, it's okay. See, I tell my people all the time, it's okay to cry. I mean, y'all see me do it often, right? Holy Spirit be speaking, and then boom, I hit the hit, feel the tear. And I remember one day going to God and saying, God, I appreciate the anointing that covered that thing, but if you could just take the tear part out of the equation. But if you can't, don't let it happen, and then I'll never ask again. And the next Sunday, he didn't take it out, so I never asked again. Let me explain why. Then the Lord revealed to me, sometime when you're weeping, I'm speaking. Can I talk to you? Jesus wept. Can I talk to you? He didn't say nothing right there. He just wept. I'm finna talk to you. He didn't say not a prayer. Mm -mm 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 -mm. He didn't prophesy. Nope. Huh? He didn't lay no hands yet. Now, can I talk to you? I say he wept. Somebody say he wept. I don't know why God got me on this weeping part right here. But this man who was God, he showed us in the flesh that it's okay to express emotion in order to properly process grief. Can I talk to you? And even this week, I tried to bounce back like it wasn't nothing. My people know. I mean, I came back on the, after the third day and I was cool. I'm going to talk to you because I had to commission some people. And God gave me the power to commission this. Hey, then the next day, I was back in the dumps. And the day after that, the day he got laid the rest of the day, I was grieving. And I was weeping. But let me tell you what happened on this beautiful Sunday morning when I woke up after processing my grief all week. This morning, God woke me up and with a tear in my eye, with nothing but joy, because God showed me, now you're ready for the next thing I got for you to do. Somebody say, it's okay to grieve. It's okay to grieve. You can't be strong for others until you learn how to weep. <laughs> oh, I'm finna talk. You can't be strong for others until you learn how to express emotion. I'm finna talk to you. Because if somebody else needs to cry on your shoulder and you don't know what crying look like, you gonna turn away somebody thinking they weep when really they just need to process that thing. Can I talk to you? <laughs> somebody say, there will be glory after this. My God, my God, I'm trying to get through this thing. I'm trying to get through this thing. <laughs> Put it on screen, Sister Kayla. Acknowledging your pain or your grief concerning the situation does not negate the power of God that he has to change your situation. Let me break that myth right now. Acknowledging that you're hurting doesn't mean that God can't come heal that thing. Can I talk to you? Acknowledging that you need to go through for a second doesn't mean that God still can't deliver you out of that thing. I'm finna talk to you. Acknowledging that you broke up about that situation from the people you thought had your back. It's okay. Can I talk to you? Because Jesus felt that you. Matter of fact, the Bible says that when Judas came to betray him, he was hurt so bad, he said, Judas, do it quick. Can I talk to you? He didn't want it to last long Because really he loved Judas And he knew what was going to happen in the end Can I talk to you? And that lets me know it's okay to feel wounds When people stab you It's oh, I'm going to talk to them It's okay to weep when people die It's okay to be upset about that job not going through It's okay Oh come on, I know we like to say God's will be done That's good, that's the churchy answer But I want some real saints that's going to say Yes, God's will be done But I'm upset Can I talk to you? Ain't nothing wrong with being human because that's when you recognize that you need a savior. Can I talk to you? Can I, oh my God, I'm finna talk. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Verse 37, and some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what, Sister Kayla? Skip this. Go to the next point. Uh, right there. Jesus groaned the first time because of grief. Lord, I'm swimming so bad. It's on my head. Jesus groaned the first time because of grief. Put it on the screen right here. Jesus groaned the second time because of lack of faith. Yeah, 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 yeah. They said, could not this man that opened the eyes of the blind not keep this man from dying? Let me talk to you. Now go back to the scripture. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Right now. Uh-huh. And they said, right now, back, back, back. Jesus said, now could not this man, not all of them, some of them, somebody say some of them. Some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again, groaning in himself, <laughs> came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone 
don't lay against it. Now, mind you, I want to show you something. Uh, Jesus wept before he even looked at Lazarus. Correction to earlier. He wept before he even got there. Now he's dead. He said, roll that stone back. Roll that stone back away from there. Now, let me talk to you right here. There will be times when God is about to resurrect your situation. And you're going to lift up a groan, not because you said this time. You're going to lift up a groan because of the doubting Thomas is around you. I'm going to talk to you. Uh, sometimes people grieve your spirit. <laughs> Men of God, woman of God, listen to me. Sometimes people grieve your spirit, not because they're bad Christians, but because they lack faith. And anything not done in faith is sin. So they grieve in you because they grieve in God. I'm going to talk to you. They don't got faith that we're going to grow. They don't got faith that God won't provide. They don't got faith that God still heals. They don't got faith that people can get set free. They don't got faith for God to heal the cancer. They don't got faith for the demons to come out of that particular person. They don't got faith that that particular family member can get healed and get saved and born again. That lack of faith will cause the spirit of God to groan just as loudly as the death of a thing. Can I talk to you? That's why I'm finna talk now. When the angels rejoice over one soul, they're rejoicing. Hey, 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 hey. Because they see hey, hey, the completion of a faith thing. And faith, oh, y'all finna talk to me now in Hebrews. Faith, hey, is the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. So the angels ain't rejoicing just over the soul. They're rejoicing over the fact that faith with works is still alive. Because Christ is alive. Can I talk to you? Why? That means that the Father is being glorified through the Son. And the angels cry, holy, 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 because of Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. Not because of the Father. I'm finna talk to y'all. That mess with theology. I'm finna tell you the truth. Jesus makes all of heaven go around. So Jesus should make all of your life revolve around. In other words, if anybody leave your life, as long as Jesus don't leave it, don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm on. finna talk to you. Because Jesus is what makes this whole planet go around on the action. And the planet's outside of that too. I don't care if they can't do it all the way or keep it. I don't care if your rain is going to miss it or stay. I don't care if they land on Mars or don't land. Either way it go, Jesus put them in place. Jesus keep them revolving. And Jesus going to keep on being good. Somebody say, Jesus is my reason. Jesus is my reason. I don't know about you, but all of the angels cry, holy, holy, holy is the lamb. Who is that? The son. Who is that? Jesus. I'm going to run up out of this church. I'm finna, oh, God, help me stay right here. Watch me. Verse, verse 39, Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who is dead. Said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench. Hey, 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 hey. For he has been dead four days. The Holy Ghost is speaking to me. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Y'all stay with me, people of God, right here. I need y'all to stay with me. I need y'all to stay with me. I need y'all to stay with me. Verse 41. <laughs> then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I Thank you that you have heard me. Let me back up right here. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. Watch me. Hey, 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 Before verse 40, Mary goes, Lord, it's a stench by now. Lord, it stinks. I'm finna preach to you. Lord, it smells bad. Hey, 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 hey. Lord, it looks bad. Hey, Lord, it don't smell good. Lord, it looks like it ain't never coming back. Lord, it's past the point of no return. Lord, it's filthy now. Jesus said, that's what I like. Because the Father going to be glorified through the Son. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. hey. He said, did I not say to you that if you would believe you would see the glory of God? They take that stone away. Verse 42, he says, and I know, at the Father, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know, hey, 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 out loud now. And I know that you always hear me. But because mm -hmm, of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe <laughs> that you sent me. Can I talk to you right here? Now, when he has said those things, he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus come forth and he who had died came out bound somebody say bound hand and foot with grave clothes in other words he wasn't supposed to be walking can I talk to you I really got a priest to say and his face was wrapped with a cloth Jesus said to them loose him and let him go now I'm gonna exegete this dog on text pop in his finger let me tell you something uh, Jesus said, mm, 
I thank you, Father, uh, that you always hear me. Hey, hey. But I said it like this so they know, yes, 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 that you sent me. Let me help you right here. Sometimes you got to pray out loud what you've been praying inside. Because it ain't just for you to hear. The devil needs to hear it and the people around you need to hear it too. Because faith and God coming by hearing and hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you say what God is saying, that's the word of God. Is it not? Well, I'm going to talk to you. So watch me. He said, I said it for those listening. Watch me. Now when he has said these things, watch me. Don't speak to your situation till you acknowledge that God had already did it. Can I talk? Uh-huh. We say that was come forth, Brother Shalom, before we say, God, you heard me. Huh? But I need a people that's going to say, God, I know you listen. <laughs> I know you already answered me when I first said it. Oh, I'm going to talk to you. See, if I know God the way I know God, Jesus already talked about this before he even got to Bethany. Can I talk to you? Because he already know what he was going to do from the moment they sent the word that the man was sick. That's why he had confidence in saying this sickness is not unto death. Why? Because he already knew what was coming. When you have confidence in what's already coming, you don't fret about what's now because you see what's coming. Can I talk to you? I don't care what the people see outside right now. If I got the scoop on the weather forecast, it may be sunny at 4 p.m. But at 5 p.m., it might be daylight again. I'm going to talk to you. And even though, yeah, 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 we don't like the storm and the rain clouds, sometimes God got to wipe away the impurities. Can I talk to you? Because he would say, come out, it makes stuff grow. But when rain come out, it grow too. But it gotta drink some stuff. Can I talk to you? It gotta cleanse you up. I'm finna talk spiritually to you. I know you don't like the rainy day, but the rainy day is equipping you too. I'm finna talk. I know you don't like the storm, but the storm is making your trust grow. Can I talk to you? Because the disciples trusted Jesus when there wasn't no storm. But when storms came, they was pressing a little bit. Can I talk to you? Oh, he was casting out devil laying hands on the sick. They was all with the Messiah then. They get in that little bitty boat. Now they talking about, oh Lord, it's a ghost. How you don't recognize the statement? I'm going to tell you how. Because fear will make you question your faith. Uh, sometimes the thing need to die because when it resurrect now it ain't got them impurities it had before it died I'm finna talk to you God is letting some stuff die man, God, because God want to raise up that new thing oh, I'm finna oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 we like the prophecy see we like God is doing a new thing you right but when something new come in he gotta tear out the old I'm finna talk to you when something new about to be born something else gotta die that's the way it works I'm finna talk to you and we like to say God you doing a new thing but we don't want to get rid of the old thing so since you don't want to give it to him he gotta snatch it away oh I'm finna oh God I'm finna sit down somewhere and, and, and watch this the Bible says after he got him up out of there the Bible says he said loose him and let him Go. Watch me, watch me, watch me. Put it on screen, Sister Kayla. This my part, not this one, not this one. Put it on screen. Keep going, keep going, keep going. This is it right here. Jesus had already talked to God about Lazarus, but he said it aloud because faith come out here. Hear by the word of God. Watch me. Jesus spoke to Lazarus' spirit and the spiritual command on waking his physical body. I'm going to talk to the people of God right here. I do not care what it looked like in the physical. If God said it's alive, it's alive. <laughs> I mean, I'm sweating bullets up here. I'm going to preach this whole thing out now. The service tore up now, okay? Uh, listen to me. When your spirit man gets spoken to by God, Prophet Springer, I don't care what else going on around you. You know. Oh, I'm yeah, gonna... yeah, yeah. I can't keep I'm finna preach this thing. We rolling. I need them to see all of this. Listen to me. Some of us ain't God. I say, God, revive it, revive it, revive it, revive it. And God is saying, open your ears, your ears, your ears. Because the thing he's saying in your spiritual ear is going to awaken that dead thing in the natural. Can I talk to you? Oh, God, watch me. He spoke to Lazarus and he said, come forth. Oh, this is my part right here. My God. I'm finna. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, oh, wow, wow, wow. This is it right here, verse 24. He who had died came out bound, hand and foot with grain clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him <laughs> and let him go. Watch me. When you are talking to someone who is spiritually dead, mm, Holy Ghost, speak through me. Yes, Holy Ghost, speak through me. Your spirit, man, through the Holy Ghost, 
talking to their spirit. Mm-mm-mm. This is good right here, but they might not like it. It's okay. You got to tell that spirit, get up out of your grave. Watch me, watch me, watch me. But now that their spirit man is awake again, when you say loose, hey, loose him and let him go. Watch me. They still need deliverance. I'm finna talk. It's okay to bring them into the body. But once they get here, they're going to need some work. I'm finna talk to you. I don't care what they teach at them other churches. I'm going to tell you what it's saying. The Bible says that deliverance is the children's prayer. And I'm tired of looking at saints who are bound by demonic oppression. Because they think one saint always say the devil is a liar. Let me talk to you. After your spirit man wake up and you come forth, you need all them demons up out of the area and off of you. Because now, if you get not resurrected up and you don't get that bound from you, you're still bound. you still wrapped like a mummy. But when God says, loose him and let him go, that deliverance will unlock you into the next piece of your life. You are alive for real now. Can I help you? See, the resurrection power of Jesus, let me show you the difference. When Jesus got up, hey, wet no wraps. <laughs> they wrapped him, mm, but the wraps was laying in the tomb. I'm going to talk to you. And the resurrection power of God don't just bring people out of their grave. It looses them from the bounds of oppression. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! If you await your say amen. amen. I get excited about deliverance, man. God, I think you keep coming. That means the saints whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Come on. Hey, hey. I ain't never heard nothing else about Lazarus dying ever again after that text. Did you? I didn't hear nothing about him being bound up or Jesus having to cast out no devil. After that, Lazarus was moving and moving and moving in the vein of God. Watch me. I'm going to show you text. So, Holy Ghost, speak through me. Verse 25. Then many hey, of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did believed in him. Watch me. The point of the miracles is to point back to the miracle worker. My God. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? The only reason we lay hands and stuff come out and stuff leave and people get healed is so that they'll acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Lord. Can I talk to you? That's the whole point. If Jesus ain't glorified, sit down. Is it bad? But if, can I talk to you? But if Jesus is glorified, you get a good thing. Can I talk to you? If you make a song, as long as God is glorified, you get a good thing. If you preach, as long as God is glorified, you did a good thing. If you tithe and get your offering, I mean, as long as you glorify God, it's a good thing. Can I talk to you? If you give to the poor, don't put it on camera. Let God be the one that rewards you. Can I talk to you? Because then it's a good thing. I'm going to talk to you. Everything we do should be so that the Father may be glorified through the Son. That's the Master. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying to you? My God, Holy Spirit, speak through me. I'm on the, I'm on the last piece of this text. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <clears throat> I'm on the last piece of this text. Whew, I feel that preaching power. John 12, verse number 9 through 11, New King James Version. If you did, say amen. amen. Okay, here we go. Verse 9, it says, <clears throat> get this here. Thank you, Jesus. Now, a great many of the Jews knew that he was there. Notice the capital H. And they came, not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. I want y'all to pay attention right here. <clears throat> now, this is prophetically what God gave me right here. Put this on screen, Sister Kayla. <laughs> God is resurrecting some dead situations and some people that were counted out for the sake of the revivalist that's within them and you. Can I talk to you? This is what the Holy Ghost says. God is resurrecting some dead situations and some people that were counted out for the sake of the revivalist that's within them and that's within you. I'm finna talk to you now. Now watch me. Your testimony carries an evangelical anointing. I'm trying to help you. Hallelujah. Your testimony carries an evangelical anointing. In other words, don't wait for the platform to be presented. Create it through your testimony. I gotta really teach this thing. I gotta teach this thing. See, someone like me that's done died and came back to life. When people talk about not knowing if somebody gonna live, I just walk up in that hospital room and say, let me tell you something. You talking to a man that literally was dead, huh? Uh, pronounced dead. 
and God brought me back. Let me talk to you. Your situation ain't that dire because you ain't dead yet. Can I talk to you? Because if God can raise me from the dead, then God can get you up out this hospital bed. Can I talk to you? Your testimony. Oh, I'm finna talk to you. Carrie's an evangelical. I'm finna talk to you. Evangelical munch because he can keep you overcome the Satan. You overcome the wicked one by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? The Bible says in verse 9 that they came not just to see Jesus, they came to see Lazarus, the one that was raised from the dead. Ooh, Jesus. There are some situations that God is going to revive in your life. I'm speaking prophetic now. I know who it is. That people are going to come looking for you because they're trying to see if what was dead really came back to life. And when they see it, the Bible says they're going to believe. to see souls galore. They gonna believe. I, I'm telling you right now, the best evangelical tool is your testimony. I know you're gonna talk about Jesus, but use it when you finish your testimony. When you get to the end, it should all point back to him anyway. Can I talk to you? Can I say, how did you survive that molestation? How did you survive the asylum? How did you survive the hospital bed? How did you survive the street life? How did you survive that pregnancy scare? How did you survive talk to you and all you're going to be able to say in the end after all of your details is Jesus Christ is a Lord Amen. Amen. Hey, somebody say Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Oh, I feel this thing. Yeah. Bishop must have left some preaching power. I feel this. Watch me. Satan wants to silence your testimony but, somebody say but. Put me on straight. He can not. <laughs> hey, brother, someone got told me to tell you, you speak it, man, speak it, man, speak it, man, speak it, man. You got a testimony, speak it, man. And you hear by God's grace, speak it, man. No matter what they say, speak it, man. God will cover you, speak it, man. That's what I hear the Lord saying to you right now. I wouldn't pause in my text for nothing, but God told me to tell you, you speak that thing, and his angels will be given charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. And everything that the people say, if you do, then we're going to do, it don't matter. God said, I'll take care of that. You trust him. You hear what I'm saying to you? God said it today, right here at this time. I'm looking at it. It's almost 1 o'clock. What is it? A little bit after 1, 104. Thus saith the Lord, October the 11th. You trust him. You speak the word. God will cover you. Yeah. Let the repeat of the Lord say so. I'm not trying to put you out this time. I'm just telling you what God said right now. You understand what I'm saying? God is going to cover you. Watch me. Put it on screen. Lazarus was a catalyst for revival because of what God had done for him. He was a walking, breathing testimony. It looked good on paper, but you are the testimony. It looked good on YouTube, but you the testimony. It looked good on Twitter, but you the testimony. It looked good on Instagram, but you're the testimony. I don't, I don't think y'all understand what I'm saying. I know you said it out loud. Let the masses hear it online. But you're the testimony. Because if they take every platform down offline, they can't take you offline. Can I talk to you? Hey, hey, hey. Because you ain't going nowhere until God come back or until you say it's time to go. Can I talk to you? You are the type. Somebody say, I am. I am. My testimony. My testimony. Hallelujah. Watch me. Jesus waited till Lazarus died before he showed up because he knew that the resurrection of Lazarus will cause people to believe in God and souls are always God's number one priority. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Jesus went late to Lazarus. He was right on time because he knew that Lazarus was going to be a catalyst for revival. Can I help you? The revival didn't start when Philip went to Samaria. The revival didn't start when Peter and John and all them went out there to the Gentiles. The revival started when Jesus started. And people like Lazarus was hopping up telling their testimony. Oh God, I'm going to speak. The testimony started when the lepers, nine, went away and didn't say nothing. The tenth came back and said thank you. And he went back and told about it. Can I talk to you? When the high priest said, shut your mouth. They said, listen, man. Huh? Who told you you was clean? He said, listen. The one who healed me said, get up, take up my bed and walk. What you talking about? You didn't do nothing for me. So you're not fit. Oh, I don't know about I ain't got but one saint in here today. You didn't do nothing for me. So you ain't finna tell me what I can pick up, carry around. Let me help you. Yeah. The bed he got up off of that he was carrying around was part of his testimony. Watch me. Sometimes we ready to dash away the memory and get rid of the ugly thing. And we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to revisit it no more. We don't want nobody else to bring it up. But guess what? The good, the 
bad and the ugly, Sister Claus. Even the worst, Deacon Keith. Some stuff I don't want, but I'm going to be real. But if it ever get brought up, you know what I'm going to say? Oh, well, look where I'm at now. It's a testimony. God, let me testify. Yeah. You want to try to expose me? Do it. Yeah. Let me expose myself. Yeah. yeah, I used to do that, 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 and even something that you didn't know about. Yeah. But God's so good, look at me today. Because yeah. if any man be in Christ, I don't know what you heard, but he's a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Watch me. I don't care if the shade room posted. Don't matter. The shade room can be as shady as they want to be. But your testimony still going to set somebody free. Can I talk? And Shane is an accuser of the brother in any way. So a folk being shady, you might as well synonymously put that with Satan. Shady equals Satan. Satan equals shady. Same thing. Like, hey, 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 I'm going to talk to you. Don't worry about the shade. Because sometimes it gets too hot and you need a little shade to cool you on down. Can I talk to you? Hey, 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 hey. Yes, I thrive wherever you put me. You put me in the jungle, me and the lions finna run. You put me in the fields with the horses, me and the horses gonna gallop. Let me show you why. Hey, hey, I'm running with horses now. I ain't getting weary by no dog on foot, man. Jeremiah 25, let me talk to you. I don't care what they say. They say you're supposed to be stressed out. Don't sit down, you're supposed to still be grieving. No, I'm running a race. Cause God said, get up, get back on the street and run. I'm finna talk to you. I don't care what they say. I'm in the house of the Lord. And whenever I come in God's house, I get excited. If y'all some free saints, stop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Devil ain't gonna stop my praise. I'm gonna tell you that right now. He ain't gonna shut me up. <laughs> I don't care what they say. He ain't gonna say, hey God, I worship you. Why? Because John 3 16 is the same thing. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And if you get somebody to believe in him, Jesus, off of your testimony, you just saved the soul, people of God. So I don't care what it looked like, you better testify. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> testify about how God done brought you. Listen, it's just the humble. You got the anointing for testimony. When it comes to the financial thing with school and all that stuff, look, just testify about it. Tell them, look, God been good to me. Every time I turned around, I saw a check. Why? Because I needed it. God got me out of all them situations. Let me talk to you. Minister Tyler, when they say, I don't know about my health, say, listen, autoimmune disease got cured for me because of faith. Faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word, I'm trying to talk to y'all people of God. I don't care what it look like. Don't let nobody stop you from testifying. You understand what I'm saying? Because you are the testimony. So your life should be the testimony. You should testify just by breathing. Mm -hmm. you, know, you ain't got to say, God save me. You should see God saved you by the way you talk to me. Hey, 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 hey. I should see God save you by the way you talk to her. Can I talk to you? I should see God save you by the way you talk to him. Can I? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm finna preach. You should see it. I should see the testimony by the way you live your life. Because when Christ changed you, you don't act the same way. Can I talk to you? When something changed, it's not the same, is it not? Because if it's the same, it ain't no change. Can I? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm finna talk to you. So we see the testimony based on the way your character has a 180. Because if it's a 360 minutes of Tyler, you back in the same spot. It sounds good, but you still in the same spot. And I did a 360. I know. I don't see no change. But, but when you do a 180, it's different. Okay? So if you was here and you turn around, 180. Oh, okay, 180. Now I can see clearly now. The rain is going. You understand? Know Y'all listening to me? Somebody say my testimony. Will spark the faith of the unbeliever. Write that down. That's the last point. My testimony will spark the faith of the unbeliever. God is raising up some Lazaruses. I felt this thing. I felt this thing when He gave it to me. God is raising up some Lazaruses. He is not laid. He on time. God ain't laid. He on time. God ain't laid. He on time. God is not laid. He on time. You know what else? God is not dead. He's alive. God is not dead. He's alive. Minister Tyler, I feel this thing. God is not dead. He's alive. Can I talk to you? God is not dead. He's alive. Let me show you something. You ain't dead. You alive. Can I talk to you? You're not dead. You alive. Can I talk to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I talk? You're not dead. You alive. I don't listen. Let me tell you something. Don't let nobody bury you. Yeah. Yeah. Deacon, I gotta preach. This is what the Lord is saying. This prophecy now. Don't let nobody bury you. Are you listening to me? Don't let nobody bury you. 
Hey. Can I? Mm. Don't let nobody bury you, because watch me. When man puts you in the dirt and cover you, man wants you to stay there. But when God puts you in the dirt and carry you, it's because he's going to water you and put the right sunshine and till the ground and get rid of the weeds and the foxes and the pests. And you about to grow into a plant. And when you reach the surface this time, you're going to blossom. Oh, God, you're going to blossom. So the thing is, listen, say, God, you plant me. Satan, you can't bury me. I was going to say it again. Satan, you can't bury me. Say it again. Satan, you can't bury me. Tell the demonic around, say, demons, y'all can't bury me. Yeah, demons, y'all can't bury me. God planted me, I'm springing forth. God planted me, I'm springing forth. Listen to me. God planted me, I'm springing forth. In power and three, see, three mean trinity, three mean harmony, three mean completeness, three mean new life. Can I talk to you? Woman of God, you know what we say. Three, somebody say, it comes in threes. Yay, yeah, God is the one who will resurrect your dead situation after that three day stretch. And I ain't talking about in the physical realm, I'm talking about in the spirit realm. Some of y'all need to realize it's your third time now. Time to get on up out of there. See, 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 in baseball they say three strikes you out. And the world say, yeah, three strikes you out. And some of them ain't got no grace, so they say three strikes and you out. But my God is a God of the second chance and the third yeah, chance. Yeah. And yes. the fourth chance yes. and the fifth, can I talk? Yes. And the sixth chance and the seventh chance. Matter of fact, my Bible tells me that a righteous man falls seven times and get back up each time. Yeah. And then when Peter asks, Lord, how many times should we forget and joke us? They keep doing what they do. And he says, seven times? Because he thought seven, you know, it means completion. And Jesus said, let me throw your theology in the dumpster. Seventy times seven. If you can count 490 times that they got offense, then you need to be delivered from the spirit of offense. But guess what? People going to do it. I'm going to tell you right now. You got to be willing to forgive them every single time they do it. Listen to me. But when you learn that, I'm going to tell you what happens. There's a change that happens on the inside of you. And the love of God will permeate your being. And so now when I go to tell my testimony, it won't come from a place of hurt. It'll come from a place of healing. It won't come from a place of pain. It'll come from a place of progress. It won't come from a place of I wish it never happened. It'll come from a place of all things work together. Hey, hey, because I love God and I'm called according to his purpose. Can I help you? Somebody say there's progress, there's progress. in my pain. my pain. Stand up on your feet.